Namaste. This is chapter 11, Nobody Special. We are in training to be nobody special, and it is in that nobody specialness that we can be anybody. The fatigue, the neurosis, the anxiety, the fear, the sadness all come from identifying with somebodyness. But we have to start somewhere. It does seem that we have to be somebody before we can become nobody. If we started out being nobody at the beginning of this incarnation, we probably wouldn't have made it this far. Blue babies are examples of nobody special. They just don't have the will to breathe or eat or live. For it's that force of somebodyness that develops the social and physical survival mechanisms. It's only now, having evolved to this point, that we learn to put that somebodyness, that whole survival kit, which is called the ego, into perspective. When I was a when I was a Harvard professor, I would spend all my time thinking I was paid for that. I would have clipboards and tape recorders recorders to collect all my thoughts. Now I'm becoming more and more simple as I quiet. Sometimes there seems to be no one in there at all, and I just sit. Then when something needs to happen, it happens, even thinking or speaking, and I just witness it. It's very far out when we begin not to think, or the thinking is going by, and we're not identified with being the thinker. At first, we really think we've lost something. It's a while before we can appreciate the peace that comes from the simplicity of no mind, of just emptiness, of not having to be somebody all the time. We've been somebody long enough. We spent the first half of our lives becoming somebody. Now we can work on becoming nobody, which is really somebody. For when we become nobody, there is no tension, no pretense, no one trying to be anyone or anything. And the natural state of the mind shines through unobstructed. The natural state of the mind is pure love, which is not other than pure awareness. Can you imagine when we become that place we've only touched through our meditations? When we are love, we finally acknowledge who we really are. We've cleared away all the mind trips that keep us being who we thought we were. Now everybody we look at, we're in love with. We experience the exquisiteness of being in love with everybody and not having to do anything about it because we've developed compassion. The compassion is to let people be as they need to be without changing them. The only time we might need to intervene with people is when their actions are limiting the opportunities for other human beings to be free. And then the way in which we intervene is very mindful and open-heartedly. For if we are busy being somebody, trying to change someone, we are just creating more anger. If we are nobody special, but it is our dharma to oppose injustice, then it is merely an act of the dharma. And not for a moment do we lose that total love for another person who is not other than us. For being nobody, there is nobody we are not. Had we sufficient discipline, we could pursue the deepest of the past to get rid of all the ways we cling to models of ourselves. We could just sit, Zen Buddhism, and every thought that comes by that creates another reality, we would let it go. In clinging to none, we would know enlightenment. Or we might pursue the path of Ramana Maharshi, Atma Vichara, who am I? We simply ask, who am I? Who am I? And slowly we watch ourselves be other than all the ways in which we identify ourselves as body, organs, emotions, social roles. We see it all. We keep disassociating from it until we are left with a thought of I. I am the thought I. This path takes incredible discipline, for as we have freed ourselves from our bodies and our emotions, and we're just about to drop this last thought of I, our bodies grab us again, and we're back in our habitual thoughts about our bodies, our identities. Most of the time, when we watch our mind, we find it keeps grabbing at things and making them the foreground, and everything else becomes the background. When we're reading, we're not listening. When we're listening, we're not seeing. When we're remembering, we forget where we are. But can we function when the world is all background and awareness itself is foreground? When awareness is identified with thoughts, we only exist in a certain time space dimension. But when awareness goes behind the thought, we are able to be free of time and see thoughts appearing and disappearing. Just watching thought forms come into existence, exist and pass away in a millisecond. And when the intensity of concentration allows us to see the space between two thoughts, we see eternity. There is no thought there. We realize that thoughts exist against, against the backdrop of no thought, against the backdrop of emptiness, of nothing. We exist. And there we are at the edge of perceiving who we are. Then we face one of the greatest fears we will ever confront, the fear of our own extinction, the fear of ceasing to exist, not just as a body, but even as a soul. It is similar to the statement, made by Huang Po about people approaching this point, that they become fearful to enter into what they consider the void. Just stress that once they let go into it, they will drop unendingly 
that there will be nothing to go to stay their fall, not realizing the void is the Dharma itself. But as we're ready for the ultimate mystic doorway, the inner door of the seventh temple, we say, I am not this thought. We let go of even the great fear of non-existence. The senses are just working by themselves. Hearing, there is hearing occurring, but there is no listener. There is seeing, but there is no seer. The senses are just doing, all doing their thing, but nobody's home. If the mind thinks I am aware, that is recognized as just another thought, a part of the show passing by. It's not awareness itself. Thoughts are going by like a river, and awareness simply is. When we become just awareness, there is no more me being aware. By letting go of even the thought I, what is left? There is nowhere to stand and no one to stand there. No separation anywhere. Pure awareness. Neither this, neither that. Just clarity and being. Never. Namaste.